All right, so new project time. And this time I am working on another shadow box, but this one will be a little bit bigger than the one that I was working on before, the rose shadow box. And it'll be, well, bigger in pretty much every direction, actually. It'll be taller, wider, and it'll be deeper. And what it'll be is approximately 24 by 28 and nine and a half inches deep. So that is why I have all this here. Um, it'll be made out of pine, corners will be dovetailed, it'll have a door on the front that'll have glass in it. Um, no shelves, just a back, so should be relatively simple, hopefully. Um, and I really hope that I can get it done in a relatively quick order, um, just because it isn't that complicated. I just have to get myself to actually stay focused. So let's see if we can't lay some stuff out here. So just real quick, what I'm doing now is just going to kind of mark out some of the stuff that I have and make sure that I've got enough, which I already bought it all, so I'm pretty sure I do, but it never hurts to double check before you start cutting pieces up because that would sure be a bummer. So I'm going to have two pieces that are 24 inches and two pieces that are 28 inches, and so that's 24, so I'll mark it 25, and then... 28, so that'd be what, 40, 53, should actually be here. So what I'm considering is actually doing two sets of 28 on one board and both 24s, so 25, just because then I can get a little bit bigger of a piece of off cut. And then let's see, what do I have there, 72. So that won't be long enough. So basically that, Pretty much sums up about all I'm going to get out of this. Unfortunately, I'm going to end up with this much extra, which I guess is all right, but um, I might be able to use this for a couple pieces on the door, which is ideal. So we'll see what happens when I get there. So I'm just going to write this down quick. So that's 25, and this is another 25, and that's 28. This one, I'll mark out 28, so we'll put it 29. And then another 28, so we'll mark it at 29. And then these boards are about nine and an eighth inches wide. And that one's a little bit, just a touch. Well, no, that's about the same. So I'm gonna have to take off about an eighth of an inch off the edge, but that shouldn't be too bad because that'll be pretty easy to do with a hand plane. So I think the next thing I'm gonna do is mark these out and start cutting them to length a little bit better. Real quick, they don't need to be crazy accurate or anything right now just because, let me double check that. 25, 25, just because these are going to be rough cuts, so I'm, I'm going to cut them to final length again later. I just wanted to actually make sure I got them cut somewhere that they'd be at least close, so I don't have to worry about too much. I'll just do a marking line with the knife quick. Doesn't really matter, like I said where the uh, bruising is because both parts will be cut off regardless of which side it's on. So it really doesn't matter. Um, let's see. So there's that one. Set this up over here.
All right, so get rid of some stuff there, and I think should be good there. So the next step will be to start cutting some of these down to size. So that is next. This is commonplace, I'm sure, with a lot of hand tool woodworkers. I know Paul Sellers does this a lot. I think I've even seen um, Christopher Shores do it before, but basically just making a little knife wall, I think is, is what uh, Paul Sellers usually calls it, but it's just a little bit of a step down, which makes it a little bit easier to keep the saw in a straight line. And I'm using a back saw. I should probably be using my uh, panel saw, but Unfortunately, that's still in a box, so back saw it is. This one should be more than sufficient to do the job, so should be all right. Nothing to it. So what you're seeing me doing here is basically I start at one end and I slowly work my way back until, until I'm making a cut pretty much all the way across. So basically the saw is cutting into the wood from one end to the other. And then I just kind of start back at this other end and I saw more at the diagonal, which is probably more typical of what you would expect. And basically this already started kerf will help easily guide the saw so I don't have to worry about trying to make sure I stay on the line. As long as you don't get too aggressive with your cutting and you just let the saw do the work and you just move the saw back and forth, it's pretty easy to follow this, this already started curve. So that's pretty much usually how I do these whenever I'm using a back saw. I don't usually do that when I'm using the panel saw just because I find that a little bit easier to control. And typically when I'm using a panel saw, I'm also not really trying to saw exactly to a line. I just try and get close. So there's also a little bit more leeway with that, but this is just how I usually do back saws. So I figure, you know, why break from the norm? should be both of the side pieces ready to go. Ow. Careful of the crap on the back. <laughs> I usually just knock that off with a chisel or, or my little Stanley 101. Or is it 100? Uh, my little mini, mini block plane, but I have a chisel, so that's what I'm gonna use since that's what's here. I'm not trying to bevel the edge, I'm just trying to knock off all those little, little guys. Because they're obnoxious when you put your hand on them. And if you wanted to try and avoid this, so like, you know, once I'm actually cutting these to length, then what I'm going to do is I'll put that knife line all the way around 
the inside or the, the top and the bottom so that way hopefully that won't be as much of a problem since that's you know something I don't want to deal with. So that's these two. Now I'm going to go move on to the top two pieces and I will get back to you once I'm done with that. That was another technique for making that little knife line. Instead of using the chisel going all the way across, sometimes if you're well practiced enough, it's actually faster if you just take this knife. I usually hold it like this. So basically what I do is I end up taking my fingers and I just kind of hold it like this. And let me grab an off cut real quick. So essentially what I end up doing is since we already have that, uh, you know, we already have that knife line, so let's pretend we have one running right there. So basically, when you already have this knife line, I hold it like this. So basically, I have my two fingers underneath it, and then these fingers are what holds it against my hand just to keep it stable. So what I'll do is I'll just drag it. So basically, you put the tip of the knife down onto the wood, and then just a little bit. I found that this angle works actually pretty well. And then you basically just cut the corner off of part of your cut and you just drag it along that little cut that you already did with a marking knife and then you can cut out that little corner piece to make that little step down just like you would with the chisel but it's a little bit quicker once you get it down it's a little bit difficult to do it up in the air like that but uh, hopefully you got the point because well it's pretty simple once you actually get down to it so I'm going to continue cutting these pieces out and I should be back in just a sec. So this board is a little bit cupped, not horrible. I mean, I've certainly done worse. I, you know, you can kind of see that it's kind of wobbling a little bit there, you know, sort of like this. It's a little bit of wobble you can kind of see. So that means it's high in the middle. And then obviously on the other side, it's going to be high in the two outside edges. So what I'm going to do is plane that up a little bit just to sort of clean it up, try and take some of that out of it. I don't really care if there's a little bit because once I glue it, I'm going to dovetail the corners and once I get that all glued together, it will hold it somewhat straight. So it doesn't need to be perfect, but I certainly want it to be better than that. So, um, yeah, what the heck, we'll start with the, uh, the low angle jack. I don't think I need to do much else with it, so. I feel like the uh, old workshop that had the actual hardwood floor 
worked better than this. These are like cork tile floors, so it's kind of annoying. The bench slides around a little bit better, but can't wait till I get the new shop done, and then hopefully that won't be a problem anymore because I'll have concrete floors and I'll probably put down some rubber mats. So just keep waiting. It is winter, so it's a little dry. Also, do I need to use my low angle? Absolutely not, this is pine. You could probably plane this with even a butter knife. I don't think I'd want to, but I bet you could. It's not particularly difficult to plane, but I've moved and you can kind of see behind me my Plane tool is a little empty because half my planes are still packed, but I just decided to dig these out because I had them in a different uh, carrier, so that's kind of why. You don't definitely don't need to have a low angle plane, and you certainly don't need a Lee Nielsen. I just happened to get those for a pretty good deal, so that's why I have that and the low angle smoother, but you know, I'm sure you can make do with whatever you have because I certainly have. So no reason why anybody else can't. I'm certainly not special or particularly well trained in this, so I wouldn't worry about what tools you have too much. Much, much better. And now I'm just going to repeat Similar process to the outside edges. I probably won't go all the way across both sides like I did that side because that had the high spot in the middle. So I probably won't go diagonally too much, but I'll just knock down the sides a little bit and then keep seeing how close I am to actually getting it flat. So you can kind of hear when I've got the front of the plane on this side and the back of the plane on this side, I don't get a cut. So obviously, still not quite there yet. And then I kind of feather in, like I'll do two strokes on this edge, and then let's do a third one here. So then I'll do one, and then one, two, and then one, two, three eventually, and that'll basically help take it down on the outside edges a little bit more, and then less in the middle, and hopefully get it flat. Now we're talking. See what I mean? Stupid floor. It's just like when I had to work on a workmate before. Plane with one side, stand on one leg, hook the bench with another. Thought I was over with those. Oh well. The skills you learn, I guess, when your <laughs> tools are less than ideal. I think that'll do it. And then make sure I didn't screw things up too badly with a pair of winding sticks. Just to make sure that I didn't put any twist in there. Nope, we're good. Still good. Sweet. 
probably just clean this up here and plane some other ones another day and catch back later.